Hello. Oh boy. And it's cold. All right. Sunday evening again. Hello, hello, hello. Um, welcome to the treehouse. Tonight, uh, we're not doing geometry clip maps like we've been doing the past two months, I think. Uh, mostly because I did not have any time at all this week to think about how to do uh, the update step and stuff. Uh, last time we couldn't make sense of it and yeah, so we're still on the same front there. So I think I'm just gonna hold off on that and instead focus on doing some improvements to make trial more convenient to use, iron out some hard edges, I guess. What is this shit? Oh, I guess I left in some debug code. Fantastic. I didn't have to have a cold right now, but I do, so I'll be sniffling and snurfing and all of those gross-ass sounds throughout the two hours of the stream, and I hope you don't mind too much. Ah, oh, there we go already. Okay, so, uh, the first problem that I want to fix is that, uh, let me just illustrate. Uh, if you uh, if you make a mistake in a shader, for example, if you have something that just doesn't make any sense, um, and you try to recompile it, and it fails during the loading of the asset, but the problem is there's no way to. Uh, retry. So, you know, the asset itself does have restarts to retry, but they don't actually, uh, like, if I make a change here and then hit CC, uh, it's not gonna reflect in this, and then I, the only thing you can do is sort of abort. And then you get render errors and all sorts of stuff, and it's not very nice. It's kind of a problem. Uh, kind of a really annoying problem. So, that is something that I really would like to fix. The problem is that the shader stuff in this is... Um... Rather involved. There's a, a complicated protocol going on that from the point where you define the shader to the point where it gets actually sent to the GPU. Um, so, yeah. Let me just. Oh my god. Let me just blow my nose real quick. This is awful. There we go. My apologies. Whew. Okay. Feels a bit better. Alright. So, I assume most of you have, uh, didn't watch or weren't here for when I did a really long stream explaining the internals of Trial. So I'm going to re-iterate what's going on here 
So one of the things... Uh... Okay. Let me try starting from scratch, so... Um... OpenGL allows you to write shaders, which are basically programs for the GPU. With those, you can influence and manipulate the rendering process. And the way that works is by defining sort of a program that is on in a particular stage. There's a OpenGL defines a sort of a, 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 a rendering pipeline, and there's a, a different set of stages for that that are run in sequence. Some of those you can program with shaders, others you cannot. Two of those are required to be implemented in modern GL. One of them is the vertex stage, which does... Well, it emits vertices to be processed by the pipeline. And the other one is the fragment stage, which uh, emits colors to be used for the fragments or pixels on the screen or buffer or whatever. So those two are necessary. Now, the problem is that for anything that you render, there can only be one particular shader active per stage. So, you can only have one vertex shader, you can only have one fragment shader. And that's... a huge pain in the ass if you want to be modular. If you want to allow your people to not have to throw everything into one gigantic shader thingy, then you're gonna have problems. So there's a couple of approaches I've seen, I haven't really researched this much, but the two most popular ones I've seen are basically sort of pre-processing stages. To one of them, one of them is uh, like you have special kind of import statements that sort of just splice in the source code from another file. And then the other one is a mega shader, which basically sort of has everything, but then you can activate or deactivate certain parts of it by having the system comment them in or out, which is kind of insane. Either way, both of those don't really sound appealing to me. And especially if you consider something like uh, an object system. Treehouse has begun. Oh god, oh man. Hello, I'm explaining the shader stuff. So if you have a... Uh, a system like uh, where you have inheritance and stuff and where you want to sort of define individual properties of an object and then combine them through inheritance and like all of those neat things and this is not going to cut it you need to have a more sophisticated mechanism for this so what i do instead is i def i wrote a system that can analyze gl shader language stuff it can translate this into a abstract syntax tree what does this software do is this your new game engine yes this is trial my game engine the tree hours is always about game engine stuff so yeah um where was i right so what this thing can do is it can take a uh, gl shader language source code and it can uh, translate that into an EST and then it can do semantic analysis of that and it can even do stuff like merging two shader files together and it does this by sort of analyzing what kinds of input and output variables you have and which kinds of functions you have and then trying to uh, reconciliate, uh, reconcile uh, differences between them and then sort of merge them together. Works pretty well. Using that what it can actually do is allow you to define shaders on your classes. So define class shader allows you to sort of attach a shader source to a class. And then through inheritance, you can automatically let the system compose these shaders together into one final shader file per stage. Now, so far, that's all cool and good. But it gets complicated. Well, more complicated than this, though. So, the reason is that oftentimes what you want to do is 
apply certain kinds of uh, effects to your scene. So for example, you would like to say add a blur effect or you would like to add a sort of like a, a, a god ray thingy. What is that? Hold on. I'll show you a picture. So you have something to stare at other than just dead code for the moment. Hold on. Let me get my browser over here. Uh, god ray effect. So this is these rays here. These light rays are god rays, or is, is what they're called. And so you would like to sort of dynamically apply these kinds of effects. Now, computing these effects requires shader code, and some of these effects actually need to influence how each object is drawn. They're not just a post-processing effect, so they're not independent, which means they need to have some sort of a way in order to be able to mix in their own code into the shader code that's already set for the object that's being drawn. Particularly the god rays, how they work is basically... well, how a primitive version of it works is that you um, have two passes. In the first one, you draw every object is just pure black, except for the light source, which is a, a white. And then you use a sort of a, a motion blur filter, a directional motion blur filter to sort of streak the whites and blacks out, and then you merge that together with a standard rendering of it, and that's how you get this this god ray effect. Now, in order to be able to draw everything as black, you need to influence how the objects are drawn. Not everything in a shader is going to directly influence the color output. But some of it is, so in order to do this in a way that is properly segmentated, properly encapsulated, you can't have the effect handle all of the drawings, so you can't do all of the shader parts on its own, and instead it really does have to inject its own code into uh, the shaders for the object itself. So that makes things annoying when you consider recompilation, because when I recompile this shader file, it just attaches itself to the class and then recomputes the class hierarchy and does all this shader merging and stuff. But because the shader pass is a separate kind of deal, it doesn't know about any of this. So... The way that uh, the shader pass knows at all that something changed is through an event. So, if you have a uh, subject class, it's called. Subject classes are classes that can receive events. And they are attached to an event loop that they can issue events onto. And if you define or if you change the shader on a subject class, it'll automatically emit an event onto the event loop saying, hey, my properties have changed. Maybe you should do something about that. And then in the shader passes, we can intercept that. So we have this update shader for redefined subject handler that is listening on the subject class redefined event and it goes through all the objects it knows about again and recompiles the shaders so that it can you know so that you actually see the changes you made immediately as you change them uh interactively so there's this whole kind of process going on of of uh, things but in the end the one thing that controls the actual OpenGL shader programs is the shader pass and not the object itself that defined most of the shaders, which is kind of counterintuitive for how you want to generally kind of think about these things. And it's also kind of really annoying to deal with for certain edge cases. So that's... yeah. I don't know any better way to deal with this, so that's just where we are right now. So let me try to figure out what's going on. For context again, since some people joined kind of late, um, what I'm trying to figure out right now is the issue of 
if you recompile a shader and there's a problem that happens during the loading of the shader on the GPU, then recompiling that again is not going to be picked up and it's going to crash and error and stuff. So that's not very nice. So let's see what we can do here. Um, what does it do? It calls refresh, which is loaded and it offloads the thing. It does a register object for pass again, which does what? A whole bunch of shit. Um, yeah, okay. So here, this method or this generic function is responsible for sort of telling a shader pass that, hey, I want to be able to draw this kind of object with you. So it has to take care of initializing or generating the shader asset so that we can actually draw that thing. What it does is it goes through the effective shaders and it uh, attaches its own shader code to it if necessary and then creates an asset for it. And then, yeah, creates a shader program for it and then it just pushes that onto there. Okay. One of the things that I would like to do here right now is, if possible, reuse the asset so I don't have to generate a new one every time, but I'm not sure if I can even really do that. Okay, that's fairly simple, surprisingly. Um, yeah, that should be doable. Okay. Also, feel free to just chat about whatever the fuck you want. Or even chat to me about whatever the fuck. Doesn't have to be about, like, game stuff. As usual. Free house. Just chill. Sunday. So. <laughs> just, like, if, 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 if you wanna, uh, tell me about how amazing... Uh, the, the cereal you How had do you for lunch was logs in a chain. In a chain? What do you mean? A chain? A chain of what? Optional logs for what? <laughs> um. All right. Okay. Of course. You mean you want to reflect whether the optional argument was passed in, 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 this, in the function you call? So if you have, uh, let's see... Uh, I don't know. And then you want to call F in here or what? knowledge of the optional logs? What do you mean? Huh? Okay, well, I'll try to concentrate on this for now. 
Okay, let me see. So... Painters... I'm not even sure if... If... This is possible. Mm. <laughs> so Validate that? Oh, I'm very confused right now. I don't know if it fair class or everything. Fresh class. Offload. Oh yeah, I already validated it. Okay. I'm not sure if that's the best way to do this. It's the cheapest way. Hmm. Does it though? No. This doesn't smell right. I only remove. I only remove the cloth itself, but not the effective cloth necessarily. It's possible that this never actually worked right. Um. Okay, so let me see if I can try to write this up a bit more clearly. By the way, can you read it and stuff? Is, is that fine? I, I don't even know. Um. So basically, we have it's a, a bit function. It's small to me. Bit small. It's readable. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to believe now. Okay. Okay. So we have a function register object for pass, which has the purpose of, well, uh. Tell the pass that this object should be drawable. And then from there, what it does is it. Use your object for pass. Does what? It does determine effective shader class. So what, def what this does is figure out the Closest superclass that encapsulates all shaders. The reason we want this is to save on um, basically having. Well, okay. What it does is it determines the closest superclass that has the same shader definitions as the class you're, you're giving it. The reason we want this is so that we avoid duplicating shaders that are exactly the same. That actually makes me think of another way in which this could go that will be much more efficient still by doing that for every paw separately. Um... think about that. I'll put a fix me. Uh, maybe you consider... Um... Uh... 
as they might not speech change. At different levels and could thus be cached. Respectively. Fix me share shader between shader programs by caching and somewhere. Okay, so it calls the Terminate Effective Shader class to get the closest superclass with all the changes. And then what it does is it retrieves the effective shaders for that class. Uh, get the source of all the shader stages for the class. Then it retrieves the effective shaders for itself as well. And then it does chorus pass shader which merge the shaders of the class and the class together. Then it creates a shader asset. Create shader asset. Create shader program asset. And then it's done. some caching that's important. And I think this is fine as it is. Because it's always going to be the effective class for... Yes. Maybe? No, I think this should be fine. Yeah, this should be fine. <laughs> God damn it. What I'm trying to think about is if I have a class A that defines some shaders and then I have a, a class B uh, inheriting from A and B does not define any shaders then if I recompile A's shaders, it's going to trigger... Is it going to trigger a redefined? Is it going to trigger this? That's what I want to know. Shaders, subjects... No, not shader, subject, subject. Since it's obsolete, use effective hands. Okay, so it propagates the subclasses afterwards, so the order is preserved. Due to the hierarchy, so that should be fine. The subclass should get triggered and should get its refresh in the shaders afterwards. Okay, so there is no bug there. That's good for now. Um, all right, now 
This is not a problem, but this is. So, so we're gonna let program previous. By the way, if you have any questions, please let me know. It would be very good for me to know whether anyone actually understands any of what I'm saying. Okay. So what I can do... Is uh, the restart restart case? Uh, no, actually, I'll just fucking arms. Oh, good. Safe to do because it doesn't matter. Uh, continue. Tf dash class assets. Previous. Chas. All right. Yes. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. This could be up here. And actually, this could be down here. I think. No, wait. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. Okay. So it's this. And then... During the load is when the problem happens. So we can do this. I'm not sure if I'm even thinking right today. Birds are excited. Mm-hmm. Okay. Think this is correct. Uh Who knows? Okay, so that's not right now. Well. No, that's No, I think mm -hmm. It's not going to work at all. Oh. Ah. Uh.
Well, it is going to work, but not in... Hmm. Okay. Uh, hold on. Okay. So, there it is. Now I make a stupid change. It fails, and then... Continue. And it doesn't break. Fix it, and then it does the thing. Good. Fantastic. It doesn't allow it to do the thing that I would, would have maybe liked to do, is... is is instead of um, saying that you can just continue from the failure, um, you could uh, tell it to retry with updated source, but I don't think I can actually do that because things are too far apart. At least that's fixed though. Um, yes. Yes! The birds are going crazy over there. Yeah, they've been rowdy all day. I'm not sure why. Uh, hello, continuing from failed shader change. Uh, how does the report thing work again? Uh, ignore the change and Add some notes for future optimization possibilities. Possibilities. Okay. That's one of the things I wanted to do already fixed. Good. Now... Um... Oh, I think it was... Good job. Thanks. Um, actually, hold on. Let me let me put some seed in in their food tray. Maybe that'll calm them down a bit. I've been trying to before I started the stream, but they were sitting on it and wouldn't leave. So didn't want to spook them either. If there's still stuff in there. Um, also, if you have any sort of questions for stuff about trial that you would like me to explain in general, then this would be a perfect time for it. I wouldn't mind, uh, playing things overall. Or as I mentioned, really fucking anything, just talk to me. <laughs> oh god, I'm so lonely. Why do you think I talk to birds? There we go. Now they have more food. Food stuff. Good. <clears throat> um, right. Let me actually see. Uh... Lots of fix me's. Hooray. Check for duplicate input outputs. Yes. Oh, interesting. Career for max numbers of textures available and build a standard basin number. Right. That's another thing that I don't quite know how to do. Hmm. It's not terribly important. Well, kind of is. What's the what's the uh, the fucking GL query to get the texture number, texture ID, max thingy? 
Uh, GL max texture ID. Mm, yeah, it is. Max texture image units is the thingy. Okay. Um. So we want to recompile this dynamically based on that. Pasta the entire thing, no? What's the music? I'm really liking it. See this up here? There you go. You can also use the currently playing command for me, like, at any time or not. What? There we go, yeah. In chat, you can type colon colon currently playing for Shinmara and you'll always get the current music for Dream. But it should also, at least on the treehouse, show up up here when the track changes. But if you miss that, that command is where to go. <laughs> ah! If. Okay, um. Uh, or. Down from. Well. Uh oh, whatever. It's two zero but Good. Again. 
this compile return? Compile. It does so. One call. Hooray! So that should work now. I hope, maybe. Back type units. Integer. One. That's inclusive, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And now... I launch. Hey, hey, hey! I think it works. Nice. Very nice. One more fix me done. That should probably, hopefully, also avoid crashes on systems that are odd. I think... Like... 16 or what I had is the minimum required by the GL spec, but you never know, so... Anyway, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wrote right now. Make these safer by loading a copy or something. Right. The reload scene has a similar issue wherein if there is an issue during the loading of the scene, then the previous one is going to get shreked, so... Um, how can we fix this? Not easily. Hmm. That's kind of a thing that I wanted to do with the general kind of loading system. Where you can transition between... Well... It kind of a system where you can give it two different scene objects and it'll automatically transition between them and figure out which assets to load and unload and stuff. And also automatically figure out which assets are even being used because right now that's a huge mess. But uh, I'll quickly look through and see if there's anything easier to fix. For now... This way, which attributes include? Not gonna do that. Fuck that. DC. Frame buffer bundle. Oh yeah, I don't even use these anymore. I don't think. And I don't know what that means anymore. <laughs> Probably something that's not being uh, collected properly. Array textures. Well, we got that for 2D arrays. So that's nice. Right, this is another issue. Generating mitmaps for depth stencil textures is not possible on all drivers. Specifically on the Intel drivers, it apparently doesn't work. And it just errors in your face. So... Is there a feature I can test for that? Uh... OpenGL Deft Stencil Mitmap. <laughs> uh, maybe it's in 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 the features we have right. Ah, oh, shouldn't have done that. In the features we have right now, let me see. Here, oh, uh, uh, trace. Launch. Woohee! Lots of information. Here we go. That's a bunch of bullshit. Um, let me just take this and scratch it up. And then... There we go. Well, to draw indirect. No, no, no. This is gonna take forever to look through it, isn't it? God. These are like... Generate... Uh, 
I don't think it's gonna... Let me just... Only one map map. Theft. Theft buff afloat. Theft texture. Post theft coverage. Hounds. Act. Copy that. Active. Probably not. So that's a, a, a shit. Um, is there a, a way to get which traffic driver we're using? Ah, I already cleared it. Oh, well, let me get it again real quick. Guess here vendor. Yeah. Hmm. Like a, an ID I can check or something. Something that's less. Less annoying than a, a string. Yes, I have birds. Hello. Uh. Here. Can I have more information at some point? Pretty sure I did. Yeah. I missed what you were trying to check. Something about Depp Stencil Mipma. Yeah, uh, apparently trying to generate, like using gen generate mipmap, GL generate mipmap for Depth Stencil textures does not work on all drivers, specifically in Intel one errors. And I don't think there's a feature that I can test for that, whether I'm allowed to do that. So right now I'm trying to see if, you know, maybe you can just condition this out for the Intel drivers. Because, you know, I'd, I'd rather just not have mitmaps than it crash. <laughs> EW. Yeah, you know. But yeah. <laughs> Have you done any sort of uh, driver-specific stuff in Capel yet, or or is that all like just uh, something that you only uh, see in your nightmares? <laughs> uh, isn't gonna get me anywhere. Uh, is there like OpenGL distinguish uh, vendors? Where's that fucking thing you get? No, not getting started. You'll get there. We go. Where's the list for? Oh, it's here. Okay. Active. No. Vendor. What? Could be a vendor, though. No. No. Um. On text. Here you go. Yeah, vendor. And vendor. What? Why is that not listed here? Is that like a, a thingy? Oh, it's in Gat String, of course. <clears throat> It does not change, okay. They're like a GL window list. A, a list of curated. Oh, great. Not yet, but I think for uncheckable stuff like this, I might attempt something that should work, and then if it fails, catch the error and treat that as my feature check. I see. Yeah, it, it, it's difficult to know, though, for some stuff, whether it's just due to user error or, you know, hardware just not doing it right, so... 
I'm not sure if you can do that in, in, in the general case. Okay, so way back. Two thousand and nine, baby. Oh. Still have it. Here we go. Lot of yeah, I was thinking a dumb test that the spec says should work. Oh, I see. So something like what? Uh, what was it? Make tools or whatever it does? Where they like just run a huge number of curated C examples through the compiler to check what's available? <laughs> it's still mind-blowingly insane to me. Like, how bad does your environment have to be that you have to do something like that? That's just... Stupid. <laughs> stupid levels of lack of metadata. Uh, I don't know what this list actually tells me. I don't know if it tells yeah, me. Yeah, that's fucked. Okay. I don't. It. Intel. Just. This. Okay, it's just Intel, apparently. I should just check this on my laptop real quick. Ah! Uh. Headphone cord is still too short. Mm. Let me see real quick. Uh... Ah, shit. I have to compile everything. Fuck. I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm very tired of everything. Surely this is not an uncommon feeling for you. I'm usually not tired of everything, just of myself and everything I do. But that's not everything. <laughs> I don't think I ever get tired of chocolate. Oh god. Um... Yeah, so it's loading stuff. <laughs> uh. Might want to actually put that into mm, features or something. Depending on that. Uh, it would be nice if I could put it, could put it into features, but the problem is that uh, you know I only know this at runtime. I'm pretty late, so a feature would be kind of useless, even though it would be cool. FREF is the Foodie Rumpus Asshole Factory, which <laughs> which is the group that uh, <laughs> which is the group that publishes our game stuff, or you know. Uh, well, hold on. Let me. It's the name for the group where we, where I and like Jinrail publish uh, our game stuff, and this is the website. It's really good. Um. <laughs> uh. <laughs> anyway, let me just. Hold on. I'll launch... E... Where are we at? Um... Oh boy. The vendor name is Intel Open Source Technology Center here. Dude... That's a lot longer than I was hoping. 
And I don't know if that even changes between platforms. <sighs> so let me just do this. Uh, we have a whole bunch of shit here. Even got stuff to check for video card memory. Ooh. Where does the spec say that generate texture mip map is valid for depth stencil textures? Uh, does it say it's not valid? I mean, it doesn't specify anything at all about... Oh yeah, it is a 2D texture. <laughs> it, it that stencil texture is just a different color format. It's... It's still a texture 2D. <laughs> that's the thing, it's the color format that's depth stencil, not any kind of other thing. Yeah, it doesn't say anything whatsoever about the color format, which makes me think that, um... Intel just sucks dick, but... Whatever. Mayor culpa. <clears throat> okay, um... If on... Even there. Uh... But... Bring when there comes. What did I get here? And the video. All caps. Also, it's no longer ATI, is it? It's, it's no, like, AMD. Did they rename all this stuff? Nope. They probably rename this, though. Maybe. I don't know, man. Fuck it. Fuck all y'all. It. Fuck off, laptop. Okay. And that's not here. That's. Uh. Being able to do feature tests would be so great. So great. Because then you could do all sorts of unoptimizations depending on the platform you're running on, but that would require pretty much compiling all the source code on the target system. One more fix me done. What else we got? I suppose maybe there's something I should find to loop. No, I don't hear. Wait. Maybe there's something nicer to find the loop. What? The loop? Did I mean the pool? But the pool is easily found. 
problem is, if anything, this, which is still fucking disgusting, but I don't know how else to do it. Oh, no, I see what I mean. Yeah, the, the event loop is what I meant. So that I can issue the load requests and stuff. I see. Yeah. Still don't know how to go about that. <sighs> There's a lot of stuff that requires, like, global information. Like, if you, if you need to access, like, especially for, like, Dynap, you know... If you want to have interactive development, then a lot of stuff needs to know how to reach the context and stuff. But, uh... I don't know how to do that in a way that doesn't disgust me, so... Might be relevant. What is this? Show manual generate from Mitmas for deaf text reason generate Mitmas be supported. A manual... Up the approach B. Now the generation of Mitmas is done by average and... Uh, don't make much sense for deaf textures. But that's manual generation, isn't isn't generate netmaps the the automatic generation? And with the NVIDIA drivers I can generate the mitmaps at least. So I don't know. Plus I mean it's it's a it, it's a it's a color texture with a depth and a stencil attachment. So it it does have a I color mean part. You run it manually, P. Oh. What do you mean run it manually though? It doesn't it never automatically computes mitmaps, does it? Anyway, like, it, it still makes sense to want to have mitmaps because you do have a color part of the texture that you will probably like to mitmap, but you just also have, a st like, a depth attachment as well. Right? No, wait, that's separate textures. I'm a fucking dumbass. Hold on. Never mind. What? What was I thinking? I'm not sure. Um. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, I, I'll just check if this is like a a mitmap. Uh, the, the fucking. This is a depth texture or not. <laughs> so, how do I do that though? Um, I don't know. Because the information is elsewhere. <sighs> Cursed inputs. Where do I even... Where do I even use this? Um...
Mrs. Grosak. Uh, used right now. I do that here and where else? Fifth image object. Okay, I see. So that's why. I use that everywhere, which is good. From that... So that's just the fourth of the object. like a thousand variants of that yet where do you like specify individual parts fuck that I'm not doing that okay um Metrize. Uh, yep, that's a good number of fixes. What else we got? Some gamepad axes are reversed. That's um fuck that. What is this? Retain objects that were not created by the handler's mechanism of the subject. Like what? Which ones would that be though? Yes, if you dynamically add a one at runtime or something. Hmm. Not sure how to track that though. No, well, actually, I do. Not sure I want to fix that right now. It seems like a really fucking niche thing, though. I I see how to do it. I just don't want to right now. Match up the keys, right? Match up the keys, right? Oh yeah, doesn't even have that. Fuck lop. Um. Right, still no idea on that. Mm. 
not sure. Containment. Containment of what? Turn <laughs> polygon the vertex count. Oh yeah, I assume triangles right now, and that's not very good. Uh, nah, not gonna worry about that. Could be a container unit, but things get recursive in the hunt if that is the case, but that. Um, it's been so long since I used this shit, I don't even know Nightblind, if it even works at all. I'm not sure, I don't understand. I have to call it for it. Oh yeah. I think a... Yeah. Currently makes a bunch of assumptions about things. Aren't very nice. And there's a, a potential issue between different kinds of uh, textures you might need for a shader pass. Getting coalesced together, something. Your rule defaults. That's an important one, but. I'm not sure who with that. Get events if process or discarded events is called recursively, thus resetting the index and new events are issued. Not the point of the index where the recursive all happens. The check will assume nothing is changing. At least this is very Yeah. I don't want the issue. Um, I don't think I ever even use discard events, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, this is just a thing and I knew w was going to be a problem if I... while I was implementing it, but I don't think I want to touch that. There's this cause of bad behavior, we get hot. Not the loading of a map. Yeah. Make sure to first for proper color format. Oh yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. That's uh, an easy fix. Shared initial and initialize after entity and entity slots color one color color get out of here. Dispatch on that, so if color it. Back forward and fine. 
Ah, fuck this. Let me just read her. Font value. Color. And that should be that. Okay. Who knows if it's not fuck me, I guess. Oh wait. Need to remove the note. There you go. Uh curse color of identity. Okay. Another tiny fix done. Still lots of stuff. Yay! So the configurable defaults for the assets is something important. Namely because it... Well, what it means is that usually you want to let the user be able to configure stuff. I can say, okay, I want to have like eight times uh, multi-sampling or like fucking anisotropy or whatever the fuck and or like a linear filtering or whatnot. And those are kinds of, uh, you know, default arguments for a bunch of assets. Like for example, the texture as these as the defaults, but you would like to be able to configure those without having to replicate the entire thing in your own video game. So there should be a mechanism, a sort of a, a default storage for that kind of deal. So you can uh, do that without having to really worry about it. And then all you need to do is like present some kind of dialogue that can set those things. Uh, but honestly, I don't know how to go about that. So, yeah. Or at least I don't know a good way to go about it. Probably something, something ubiquitous to do. And then have like a, a simple configuration storage thing. Probably solution, but I... not right now. No thank you right now. Do we have anything on, on the Trello? Um, UI system is no longer in progress, though that should really also be back traders. What else have we got? Enough the field, still haven't got that. Well, metric fog, blue, motion blur. Okay, I got a bloom filter though, so that should be done. Cross that out. Motion blur can actually suck a dick. I'm not gonna do that. Um please don't make video games with motion blur, it's so bad. Um Metric Fog. That would be cool and stuff, but never I don't wanna get into that. Death peeling. Oh boy. I tried implementing death peeling at one point. I'm not sure if it's even still in there. Is it here? Black runner, light scatter, pause, chromatic aberration, FXAA. No, it's not. I think I threw it out because I couldn't get it to work. I don't know why. Death feeling isn't a particularly difficult technique to implement, but I just could not get it to run with my system. I would have to investigate that again at some point. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, state capture. Yes, save states and stuff. And like recordings and whatever. Networking. Mm. Collision detection. Stage segregation. Retreat analog system. Animations. Editor components. Oh, yeah. I guess. Since we don't have that much time left over, I could also show you the editor components. 
Yay! Um, before I do that, let me quickly set up a more intr interesting uh, thing here. that and we shall uh find here's object teapot uh vertex entity or identity and you shall have alternate arcs Fine asset bench teapot mesh. Uh, what was it? Teapot dot yeah, I think. Hello. Teapot dot yeah. Yay. And I think I need a name, I believe? Maybe? I'm not sure. No class in English. Of course not. What was I thinking? Metrix Array, uh... Asset. That was how I did that. I'm no longer sure because I don't remember. Hurrah for things I don't remember. Set up steam. It's in nine. Probably should really make the scene an argument so that it can do trick shots. <clears throat> make instance teapot. And then enter make instance. What kind of camera? FPS camera, I guess. Or free roam camera, maybe. Yeah, let's do a free roam. No, or catch. Free roam camera. Name camera. And we're also giving you a name. Teapot. Fantastic. And the default location is gonna be. Let's say. Zero. 70. Yep. Oh no. First inputs for experience. What? Mesh. What are you talking about? Oh, it Dummy. Am I? No. How did I do this? Um. <laughs> sure wish I could remember. Get time machine. What do we have computers for? Remembering things. Make asset. Mm, UI stuff that I was testing. More UI stuff. Here we go. Here we go. Depot mesh. And then we have... Just this. Okay. Really? Interesting. Okay. I mean, alright. Wait, I could just fucking... Give me that back there. 
What is it? Here we go. Do I still have that? Guy box. Messy beach. Yeah, I do. Nice. Let me just fucking get all of this good stuff here. And just fuck that in here. What are you talking about? Oh. Uh, changed. Uh. Whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Sweet. You got a skybox in this bitch. Nice. Feels like I'm really there. Oh my god. Teapots. Look at them. Fancy. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Alright, um. So what I wanted to show you was not this, believe it or not was not actually this. Uh, what I wanted to show was... The texture on the teapots is a cat. Um, you can sort of see it, be but it, because it's not UV mapped, it's just squished in random places. By the way, watch with the visitor screen as HT left that is never occupied by any window. I've said this, uh, before. My screen runs at a resolution of 1920 by 1200, but the stream is a... 720p, so that leaves things left over. Just have to scale it downwards in, in the height. And unless you want me to squish things, well, that's what you get. Um, right. So, what I wanted to show you was the editor stuff, which is really neat. Um, workbench. Uh... Change that real quick, and then quick load. Now, editor. Oh no. Ah, oh, fuck off. Did I not? God damn you, ASDF. Fuck you. <coughs> Fucking, I swear also, to God. Also, why are some things wrapped in prawns? Are they simply for easy C C C C? Yes. Uh, you see here, I have this maybe reload scene so that if I recompile the method thing, thing, it automatically reloads the scene for me. That's why. Anyway, um, fucking ASDF changed its public interface at some point, and that broke Qt libs, which is really fucking cool. Thank you. So, let me just fucking deal with that real quick. Yeah, uh, tools. Okay. There was never a circular dependency before. Are you talking my dick? What? What? Why are you trying to load the editor now? I didn't tell you to. Huh? What is this crazy shit? Oh, it just... Oh, that's why. 
I'm a dumbass. Are we good now? Good now. Simple instance is not externally the try package. Oh yeah, I changed that. Err uh, fuck. Object. Because there's no more instances tracking. Um that's a shame because that was one of the really cool features. X. Instances are no longer trapped. Okay. So, all right. So here's a thingy. And now, <laughs> this has got to be the longest setup I've done for anything. Now you're gonna expect too much. Um, what was the single? Yeah. Um, I think I didn't do this before at all. Because I can't run this in a separate thingy. I thought I had a... Hmm. Not sure how to run these now because the main thread is already... Oh yeah, I remember now. I had... At this! Whoa, advanced technology. Reading. All right. No, the main thread is free. Ah, where's the main window? And we're gonna do scene graph. Is this? Does the scene graph need a thing? Yes, it does. Hey, here we go. So this is a visualization of the scene graph, which shows all the objects in the scene. So you have the... Why can't I resize that? That's garbage. You have the teapots, you have the grid, the skybox, and the controller and stuff. And you can clickety-click. And you can inspect them and see their stuff. For example, we can go into the teapot here, and then we can see... Uh, well, we got a color here, so we can now change the color. Uh, back four, uh, let's say we want them to be red. And now that pot is red! Whoa! We can also move them around, of course, we can change the velocity. Going, going super fast. Whoa! <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> this may be a bit too fast, to be honest. Like, fill out. Okay, good. So, yeah, that's. You can inspect things and then, like, look at huge arrays and, and stuff. What even is this? FPS buffer? What the fuck? I don't know what that is. I have a text here, I guess. Is that really? Oh yeah, here we go. Now the time is- the thing is changing. Yeah. 
that can see that. So you can inspect things and look at them, and that's pretty... Uh, it's a thing. Uh, you can also add new things. Uh, oh, I think... Channel... What? Maybe? No. Oh, you need to, like, uh... Dickinson's Travel Teapot. Hey, and then we have a new teapot here. See, here it is. Wait. So now we can make this one super fast. Like, maybe not as fast as before, but, like, still fast. Yeah, there we go. Shit, look at that. Whee! <clears throat> or we can get rid of it again as well. Want it? So, yeah. Um, what else do we have? Symbol inspector. Well, I mean, you can inspect pretty much everything, like including symbols and, and, and stuff. You can get the symbol, you can see the function and class bound to it, plist and all that. You can, like, I don't know, uh, you can see lists and then stuff, and then for functions you even get definition of it. And... thing. So it's... Yeah. You can also inspect packages and, like, look through all the symbols, like, uh... Package ins inspector... Uh... Uh... I don't... So then you have all of the symbols in trial. And filter them by things, so you, you know. So, for example, if I only wanted to have stuff related to the passes, have that, and it's only symbols related to pass. Maybe clear to filter again because for some reason I don't know. Anyway, so you can do that. That's kind of nifty. And what else can you do? Oh, something else. Oh yeah, the selector. I'm not sure. Did I finish that? Might have. Let me check. Wait, no. Wasn't that part of... Subject user? Instance listing. No, that was not that. Um... Was it selector? Probably. Yes, okay. Select. Oh, wait. Yeah. Selector. Yeah, so now uh, you can click on the thing and it doesn't work. Hooray! It doesn't work! <laughs> Point is, you should be able to click on, on an object and it should. Uh... Oh, it worked. Sometimes it works. I think it's probably having some issue with translation of the coordinates or something of that nature. But anyway, the point is you can like click on objects in, in the game window and it will open up the properties for it so you can sort of do that. Of course, the intent being that at some point you can also like move it around with like drag and drop stuff and scale it and all of that fancy stuff you know from proper editors, but I never got to that point. But yeah. Other components allow you to sort of inspect things nicely. Sort of like slime does, but with a more modern UI, I guess. Yeah. Hurrah! Yeah. So, it's all nice and good, but, um, yeah, there's... <sighs> So much stuff that still really, really desperately needs to get done. And I can't see the end of it. And that's making me really anxious. Oh boy. Yeah, um, so we fixed a couple of things that were kind of an issue. Not as much as I would have liked, but yeah. Next week. I'm not too sure. I'll 
I've gotten more busy recently, so I don't have as much time to spend on things. But I'll try and see if I can come up with uh, some kind of explanation or idea on how to go about the geometry clip maps. If I do find one that seems feasible, we'll do another clip map stream. If not, then we'll tackle the uh, scene transition or loading kind of dealio that I've talked about before. Because that's another important thing. Uh, like if you look, I've talked about this before, but like this here. This is so bad that I have to do this. And I really, really don't want to do this. It gets especially bad when you have like recursive things where lots of classes down the line need to get loaded and stuff. And I would really prefer if there was a system that automatically traversed the objects and like figured out which slots contain assets and to load them and stuff. Even if it is inefficient to scan the entire object hierarchy, I don't give a shit. I just don't want to do this anymore. <clears throat> so that's probably what we're gonna do. One of those two things. <clears throat> right. Um, yeah, that's about it. Any of you guys have any sort of questions or things you'd like to hear? While we, uh, pretend to chill out on the sea here, on the shore. Nice weather. This is a good skybox. I'm not done streaming yet, but just done with the treehouse. And since we have some minutes left, I guess I can answer some stuff. And even ask me what what my favorite webcomic is. <laughs> or something. Or uh if I like the color green. Or, uh, whether the sky is really blue. <clears throat> but I guess everyone just died of boredom already, so no questions. Okay. <laughs> That push everything. The spinning teapots make this really feel real. Yeah, it, it, it adds that little something, doesn't it? Uh, I know fix to make things load at least. How many teapots does a man really need at a beach? Well, I'm glad you asked because we can find out. So. Uh, let me actually, let's, let's try something here, okay? This is gonna be really bad, okay, okay, how, how are we doing? All is 60 FPS, huh? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Um... Yeah, look at that. Nice. Alright, so it means we can go higher. Um, how about a thousand? A thousand teapots. Does a man need a thousand? Now we're dipping frames. Still 30 though. 40? Yeah. A thousand teapots. They're, they're a bit close though, so maybe spread them out a bit. A bit more, you know? Nice. Also, what are you using for the text rendering? Text rendering, I use lip fonds, which is my own thingy. I already told you about it like multiple times. But you wouldn't listen. <clears throat> anyway. How dare you baggers? How dare you not listen to me, the whiny douchey kid? <laughs> okay, let's see. How how hmm. maybe two thousand? I have a shit memory, smiley face. 2,000 teapots. Okay, now we're 20 frames. 
Okay, yeah. Two thousand. Apparently, a man needs two thousand teapots at the beach. Now we know. Now we know. Oh yeah, we know now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I use lip fund, which is uh, a really small uh, library. Good to know. Thanks. It's wrapped by a CL fund. And it just does dex rendering. It's not very good because it doesn't do nine distance fields. Um, that would be another extension that would be really nice to have. But it, like it, it's really simple. It doesn't have any dependencies. It just fucking works. And that's what I'm using. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Uh, that was it for the treehouse, I guess. Ooh, track even ended. Fantastic. What timing? Impeccable. Alright, thanks for sticking around stuff. You could ask more questions next time, that would be great. But otherwise, good shit.